The stun deck is an anti-meta deck with the objective of stopping your opponent from playing the game. The most common version does this by using cards that shut down the graveyard and monsters of effects that stop players from special summoning. The deck also includes some removal effects which are ideal when going second. One thing that makes this deck unique is that it is not affected by many of the staple hand traps. Max C, Droll, Crow, Ghost Spell, and many others don't do anything against this deck, and Ash Blossom has negligible impact, meaning we don't need to fill space of counterplays to the above. In this video, I will go over the stun deck in Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel with a decklist and some replay commentary. But before we get into it, please consider subscribing to the channel and leaving a like and a comment as it helps with the algorithm to grow the channel. Hey guys, Overcast here, and today's decklist I'm bringing you is on the stun deck. It's a very straightforward deck to play, so if you like your old school Yu-Gi-Oh! where you just summon, set and pass, or if you're tired of sitting through 10 or more minutes of your opponent's turn 1 combo, then this is the deck for you. The amount of times I've just summoned one of our monsters that turns off special summoning, and the opponents had no way to deal with it so they just surrender the game. It's quite amazing and great for those quick and easy wins on the rank ladder. So I'll walk you through the individual cards. Starting with the monsters, we have three copies of Jalgun the Spiritualist. This guy turns off special summons, and we can discard one card from our hand to the graveyard at random to destroy all special summon monsters on the field. This is a nice going second effect. If our opponent doesn't have any way to negate this, then it's really good board clear. Then we have two copies of Barrier Statue of the Drought. This card switches off special summons except for earth monsters. The attribute of the statue we use gets rotated in and out depending on the format. Right now I think Earth is the least used attribute except for Wind, but for some reason there's no Wind statue. And then we have three copies of Fossil Dino Apache Sapelo. I probably pronounced this name completely wrong, but this guy also turns off special summons. Then we have one copy of Inspector Border. I would run this at more, but it's rightfully limited at one copy per deck. When this guy's on the field, neither player can activate monster effects unless the number of monster effects they've previously used this turn is less than the number of extra deck monsters they control. And then to round off the monsters, we have two copies of the only hand trap we're running, Dimension Shifter. If our opponent's going first and we can resolve this during their turn 1, then they might have to pass play straight to us if their combo relies heavily on the graveyards. Then onto the spells, we have two copies of Rikeki, standard board clear. One copy of Pot of Duality, this card fits well in this deck because we don't care about special summoning. And then one copy of Pot of Desires and one copy of Pot of Extravagance. And then this next card is quite interesting, Time Tearing Morganite at three copies. For the rest of the duel after we activate this effect, we can't activate monster effects in the hand, but that's fine because the only one we're using is Dimension Shifter. And then during our draw phases we draw two cards instead of one, and we can normal summon twice per turn instead of once. Then we have two copies of Moon Mirror Shield, an equip spell that basically makes our monsters unbeatable in battle as they'll always have 100 more attack points than our opponent's monster. Then we have one copy of Necro Valley, I was thinking about running more, but it's an ultra rare, and I can't justify investing more crafting points when we have many other ways of shutting down the graveyards. And then two copies of Dimensional Fissure. Any monster sent to the graveyard gets banished instead. Then we have three copies of Clockwork Knight. A really good continuous spell that makes all monsters on the field become machines, and then our machines gain 500 attack and defense, and our opponent's machines lose 500 attack and defense. This helps our monsters gain the advantage in the battle phase, and can also block any type dependent combos our opponents running like the Cyverse Link Engine. And then finally for the spells we have two copies of Super Polymerization, another piece of removal that our opponent can't respond to. And then onto the traps we have one copy of Mirror Force, who had thought we'd see Mirror Force in 2024. And then three copies of Storming Mirror Force, it's basically Mirror Force, but the opponent's monsters get sent back to the hand instead of being destroyed. Then we have three copies of Solemn Judgment, two copies of Macro Cosmos, another card to shut down the graveyards, and then two copies of Crackdown, a continuous trap card that steals control of our opponent's monsters. And then with the extra deck, most of the time it's just fodder for part of extravagance, but we do have super polymerization. 
when we use super polymerization, most of the time we're going into Mud Dragon of the Swamp or Garura, Wings of Resonant Life. This is because their summoning conditions are really flexible and can be used on most board states our opponent puts out. So that's it for the deck list. Let me know down in the comments below what you think, any suggestions or improvements. And now I'll show you some replays. So first replay of the video. This is one of those quick and easy wins I talked about. For some reason I was running Drowning Mirror Force instead of Storming Mirror Force. I don't know why. Anyway, we play Pot of Desires. Our opponent then Droll locks us, but it doesn't do anything. We just summon Fossil Diner, set a couple and pass. During our opponent's turn, he just scoops. Nothing more to say on that one. So, second game. This is another one of those going first easy wins. So we normal summon Fossil Diner, set 3 and pass. So our opponent's first turn. He normal summons Sword Soul of Tyre and tries to swing over our monster, but we have Mirror Force, destroying Sword Soul of Tyre. And then back to us. Our top deck's pretty useless, Dimension Shifter. So we normal summon Jalgen and get some more damage in, and now we have two monsters that turn off special summons. And then back to our opponent. He activates Sword Soul Emergence, searching for another copy of Tyre. Normal summons, goes for combat, and we activate Storming Mirror Force, sending it back to the hand. And then back to us, we top deck Solemn Judgment. We go to combat, get some more damage in. And then in main phase 2 we set Solemn Judgment and pass play. And this time, when our opponent normal summons Tyre, we activate Sodom Judgment, negating the summon and destroying it. And then back to us. We draw a pot of duality, so we fire it off straight away. Our choices are Time Tearing Morganite or Moon Mirror Shield, so we take the shield. Our opponent sees it and surrenders the game. So, on to the third replay. We're going second this time, but we're lucky enough to get Dimension Shifter in our opening hand. So we fire it off straight away and it resolves, leaving our opponent to set 3 and pass to us. We open up with Barrier Statue of the Droughts, and then we activate Time Tearing Morganite, allowing us to summon a second one. And then we get two attacks in, and then we set our two last cards and pass to our opponent. During our opponent's turn, he normal summons Fairy Tail Snow and flips one of our statues face down. He tries to attack the second one, but we have Mirror Force. During the main phase 2, our opponent searches for Diabelle Star, the Black Witch. And then he starts with Needlebug Nest to mill cards from his deck. I'm assuming here that he's searching for Infinite Impermanence, as I see Transaction Rollback. Maybe he wants to negate our other statues so he can start special summoning. But luckily for us, he doesn't find it. So he continues milling a few cards, adding cards to his hand as well, then he sets two and passes back to us. During our turn we flip our statue face up, and then we get 2,000 more points of damage in. And then we set two more cards and pass play. And then during our opponent's turn he normal summons, and then he activates the trap card Tournament Suliac to try to negate one of our statues, but we respond to this with Solemn Judgement paying half our life points to negate the trap cards. And then our opponent mills two more cards off of the effect of Tournament's Kashtira, and then goes to battle phase. When he tries to attack our statue, we respond with Storming Mirror Force, and he surrenders the game. So, on to the next replay, we're going second again. Our opponent opens with Kashtira Fenrir, searches for Tournament's Kashtira, then he sets two and passes. During our turn, we start with Pot of Extravagance. And then our opponent plays Needlebug Nest and starts doing what tournament players do best, which is building their board during our turn. So I'm just going to fast forward this. They go into the fusion monster, Graffa, Dragon Overlord of the Dark World, which basically functions as an Omni Negate. So we set full back row, and then go for Jalgen's effect, knowing it's going to get negated. 
forcing us to discard one card from his hands, but it's just max C. Then Fenrir's effect removes Jalgen. We then activate Time Terror and Morganite, allowing us to normal Fossil Diner, and then flip over Regeki, completely breaking our opponent's boards. And since Special Summoning is switched off, those floaters can't Special Summon themselves. Fossil Diner attacks, and then in the end phase, our opponent plays Transaction Rollback and immediately surrenders the game, giving us a nice going second win. So this next one, I thought it had to include because the end result is quite funny. We're going first. We open with Pot of Desires, banishing 10 to draw 2. Then we activate Pot of Duality. Our choices are Clockwork Knight or Macrocosmos. We go for Clockwork Knight as we already have Dimensional Fissure. Then we activate our Continuous Spells. We Normal Summon Jalgun and equip it with Moon Mirror Shield. We set Super Polymerization and we pass. During our opponent's turn, they activate Imperm. Negating Jalgun's effect means they can Special Summon. They Special Summon Diabell Star, the Black Witch. And they set a Sinful Spoil spell from their deck. Then they summon Snake Eyes Poplar and they search for Sinful Spoils of Subversion. They activate it to put Jalgun to our back row. Moon Mirror Shield's effect activates automatically, but it gets Ghost Spelled, but this doesn't really matter, we weren't going to put it on top of the deck anyway. Then they activate the Field Spell, and use their Sinful Spoils card to Special Summon Ash, and then we use Super Polymerization here, discarding Regeki, to Contact Fuse their two level 1s into Garura, placing it in Defense position, so Diabell Star can't crash it. Then our opponent special summons Poplar, and using their field spell they take Jalgun to their side of the field. And then I guess they don't want to play through Dimensional Fissure because it seems like they chose self-destruction, killing themselves through Garura. So moving on to the next one, we're going second and we're playing against Scareclaws. So our opponent normal summons Prisma, sending Visa Star Frost to the grave. They link into Scareclaw Lightheart, searching for the field spell, activating it. They special summon Reichheart and Visa Star Frost. This gives them the materials for Baron de Fleur, their first boss monster. And then with Scareclaw Arrival, they special summon Star Frost and Lightheart, going into Cross Sheep. Special summoning Vicious Astraloud and Prisma going into Appaloosa, Bow of the Goddess, and ending their turn. Moving to our turn, we activate Pot of Extravagance. Our opponent lets this go through, although they do respond with Max C, but we don't care about this. We don't special summon with this deck very often, if ever. Then we normal summon Inspector Border. We play Moon Mirror Shield, but Baron de Fleur negates this. So we set our two trap cards and pass play, and during our opponent's draw phase we activate Crackdown, stealing control of Baron de Fleur. And then our opponent goes to battle phase, and we fire Storming Mirror Force. And that's enough to win us the game. So last replay of the video, we're going second against Mathmex. Normally I would expect to lose this one going second. But since we have Super Polymerization in our hand, I don't immediately scoop. Then our opponent plays the usual Math Mech combo, so I'm going to fast forward most of it. Alan Bershon does a search. Summons Diameter, goes into Splash Mage. Special Summons, goes into Link Decoder. Links them both off for Transcode. Link Decoder resummons. Transcoder Special Summons Splash Mage. They get linked off into Terahertz. Terahertz effect mills Dotscaper, Dotscaper special summons, Mathmic Equation for another summon. Going into Crystal Heart, Crystal Heart special summons Transcode. Giving them materials for Singularity, that's a pretty strong end board with Super Factorial on the back row. So going into our turn, I open with Dimensional Fissure as an attempt to bait out Super Factorial, but he doesn't buy it and he just negates it with D Save Worm. 
So then we go for Super Polymerization, get those big Link monsters out of here. Going into Garura. We normal summon Fossil Diner, but our opponent has an effect Veiler, bringing his special summons back online, allowing him to activate Super Factorial. Going into Primath Mech Lablation. Using its effect, he removes Fossil Diner from our field and rips Solemn Judgment out of our hand, so we set Storming Mirror Force and pass. During our opponent's turn, he activates Small World, but he messes this up and just searches for the exact same card he discarded. He goes for combat, so we flip over Storming Mirror Force, sending Laplacian back to the extra deck. Main phase 2, he special summons Sigma as a wall of defense. During our turn, we top deck Macrocosmos, so we set it and then we attack Sigma for fun. Back to our opponent. We activate Macrocosmos to block out any combos. He normal summons Guardian and links into Update Jammer. Thankfully, Macrocosmos stops Guardian getting its effect, but it does put us in top deck mode. Going into our turn, Clockwork Knight, not much use. We activate it, it does lower our opponent's monster's attack points. It would mess with their Link Summon engine quite a bit, but they've used almost all their Link monsters. They attack us for 2500, and he passes. This time we get a bit luckier, we draw Fossil Diner, Normal Summoning, and Killing Update Jammer. And then we pass, back to our opponent. And it looks like Fossil Diner is enough for us to win the game. And that concludes my deck profile video on the stun deck. Thanks for watching. This deck is oddly satisfying to play and I'm working my way through the master rank as I'm recording this. If you liked what you see then please consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss any future content. My name is Overcast and I'll see you next time.